two most commonly asked questions regarding object in motion are how far and how fast. How fast might be relative to the car next to you, or it could be relative to the speed limit sign. How far could be relative to where you just got on the interstate, or relative to getting off the interstate. These two questions are very involved as they both include acceleration and time, which both vary. We've spent a lot of time developing a basic understanding of motion. We've also spent a good deal of time graphing our motion. Now we're gonna take all that we've learned, mix it up, and develop four equations of motion. Okay, there we go. Three expressions or equations of motion of the four. Okay, let's review one more time here. Each one of these equations of motion was derived from this picture of velocity of a VT graph. This first expression was to more accurately communicate the information contained in the slope of this line, while the next two equations, two and three, more accurately consider the information contained in the area below this line. Now the fourth equation of motion is not actually derived f directly from this graph. The fourth equation of motion is developed from exclusively a manipulation of equation one. So probably what's best is for you to put your pencil down for the moment, follow through with the train of thought, and then pause the program in order to get the notes on how equation four was developed. All right, let's go over here to develop equation number four. Now equation four begins with equation number one. Okay, <laughs> it's gonna get a little freaky here, but the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing will be seen when we compare all four equations at the very end. Okay, it's for no other reason. You'll understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. But there is reason behind the madness here. So just kind of roll with it and follow the train of thought. All right, I'm going to take equation one and square both sides of it. By squaring it, I end up having vf squared equals vi squared plus two vi a delta t plus a squared delta t squared. Okay, I've effectively squared both sides. Now this one right here you have to foil, hence this long term right in here. Okay, so I end up with vi squared plus two vi a delta t plus a squared delta t squared. Now, from this expression right here, this portion of the expression, I'm going to factor out a 2a. All right, by factoring out a 2a, I end up with vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a. Now, by factoring out a 2a out of this term, I end up with vi delta t. That's just pulling these, the, these two terms, 2a out of this, I'm left with the vi plus delta t. Now factoring out a 2a out of this term leaves me with 1 half a delta t squared. Multiply this out, check it out. 2 times 1 half is 1, a times a is a squared, and of course I have my delta t squared. So I've accounted for all of my terms. Now hopefully you caught what you just created. Look at that. What is that? That should look familiar. That right there is vi delta t plus 1 half a t squared. And this represents delta d. Okay, so we can replace all of this by delta d. And that leaves us with our fourth expression. So we have vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta d. And that is equation number four. All right, we now have our four equations of motion. Now, what I would like you to do is, at this time, pause the program, copy this train of thought down so that you understand where it came from. 
Okay, once you re-pause, or unpause rather, I would like you to take below all of your notes, I would like you to write equation one, two, three, and four, one right on top of the other, and leave a good chunk of space. It's now time to compare and show the big grand finale here about why we did what we did.